Dao versus General Towns. Lasers make superior weapons. General, Bombard. our opponent has a stronghold in the middle of the city. His laser defense system is devastating, but requires lots of power. He will be forced to divert his power to one point of defense at a time. Use this to your advantage. Now I dare you to cross it! Welcome back to Command Conquer Generals Zero Hour Shockwave. This is another post commentary because for some reason OBS really likes to not record my mic audio. While well, I'm playing this game here specifically for some reason. I guess it's just a coincidence and it's probably because I record a lot of videos for this game here. Yeah, this, this challenge here with a nuclear general and fighting the laser general will not be too radically different here. We're going to do the usual stuff, build two bases set up our base here, get some defense against his laser artillery and stuff. And yeah, that's a little bit of a gamble. He does he does like his laser artillery, which is a very good unit. I made heavy use of that while playing as the laser general. But it also means that it's a gamble because he occasionally attacks your northern flank, that's his favorite. He rarely attacks your, your eastern flank and then he likes to attack your your extra base on occasion. That's actually the best case because you can you have that house there. That's that's very very easy to defend. The only thing annoying about that is that oftentimes your rocket guys don't attack when they're in a building, even though you're in range. Yeah, I, I built that preemptively against Colonel Burton because he likes to bring in Colonel Burton later on. And Laser Burton is quite a considerable threat. He can blow up dozers quite quickly, which can be really annoying because dozers are kind of expensive, and. If he manages to attack a couple of your buildings, that can be really expensive for the nuclear general because we have the the nuclear weapons, of course. We have the nuclear research plant, and we have the we have our our internet center. So we have a, a couple of buildings which are really expensive and kind of a pain to replace. That's less true for other factions such as the GLA. Obviously, you've got the pals and stuff. But generally spoken, uh, the nuclear general seems to be a little bit more sensitive to that. I'm going to fill this building here up straight away. You can build some mortar guys and put them behind that building. That can help a little bit, but it's not necessary. And the laser general, as usual, likes to fill those buildings. You can actually waste this resource a little bit by clearing out those buildings with radiation or, or toxins or flashbangs or napalm rather, not radiation. I guess you can use nuclear weapons as well. The reason why I'm building that gun there is for stealth detection just in case and also because he likes to attack with those gunships. The gunships are actually uh, quite powerful but they're also fragile so they usually don't get to destroy a lot of things before you blow them up anyway so there's that. Yeah, some, some more power plants. I really like that about the nuclear uh, general. His power plants give you 18 pounds of power and that electricity it comes with little space and co comparably cheap. That is really convenient especially after playing the the special weapons general, she's got those crappy coal power plants. Those are those are pathetic. They only give you eight eight pounds of power, can't be upgraded. You need a lot of those. I think I'm probably going to go for the for the propaganda center next, or am I? And the new cans are really useful because I think they outrange everything the laser general has. And they're usually one shot kills for most buildings. I didn't want to build that building there. So they are quite useful uh, as a defense, but you need something to keep whatever's attacking you busy in the meantime, otherwise the new cannon is just too strong. But the new cannon was made a little bit better, I feeling it's less it's less sluggish and less clumsy than it used to be, which is quite nice. Yeah, we're going to fill up this other bunker here. The bunkers are still... they pack a lot of punch, and the eye doesn't react properly to them. A human player would probably avoid bunkers or pay special attention to them, because having a bunker with something like five rocket guys or if you play vanilla entry general something like eight rocket guys and possibly mini gunners they can be quite devastating also this entire air bunker with eight mini gunners is going to knock everything out of the sky quite quickly i did get that scatling tank just as a, as a precaution just in case he sent some air units my way and also because uh, the getting tank is actually quite useful against a lot of targets even against tanks that do okay damage they can be upgraded with the gatling upgrade and they're quite fast and their gun also turns quite quickly, so yeah, there we go. I like how he says that quite early, oftentimes, so he we've just started here and he already flips out. 
regarding the lorries. I'm not quite sure whether you really need three supply lorries, but I kind of like having that one there that's stuck between the depot and the supply stash because that's the most efficient way to do it if, if your lorry isn't even moving well, if they're just transferring stuff. Of course we're going to get those nukes. I always recommend to get two nukes. The reason is that while well, you can't destroy a nuke with... Yeah, there we go. So these guys here, uh, they can be quite nasty and I had to aim manually occasionally. Well, you can destroy a nuke with a laser. It rarely happens, but he occasionally sends a second uh, laser right after you. So even if you're repairing your nuclear silo as it is attacked, there's still a chance that the second laser will just kill it. Yeah, these attacks can be quite dangerous because he does send microwave tanks on occasion and since you guys don't attack automatically always and the microwave tank can... I don't think it can empty a building in one go, but essentially one hit kills one guy, so it can still do it in a rapid amount, very short amount of time. And yeah, there's my new cannon. Other than that, he mainly sends infantry, he just locks you in, but it's not really that big of a problem. It's really fun to just send a flame tank or what's happening there. Yeah, nothing we have to pay special attention to. Yeah, his, his artillery actually does get in well within range, so they should shoot you when... Actually, no, that's that's just later Paladins anyway. So here we go. Let's kill that guy. Kill that guy. And this is another good reason to have that extra Gatling emplacement there because that will distract that microwave tank. And I think I've mentioned it before, but Laser Crusaders are now actually called Laser Crusaders. Before they were called, I think, just Laser Tanks. But they were, would call themselves Laser... Yeah, I, I don't get this. So why these guys wouldn't, wouldn't attack me here. That was just... Because that guy was clearly in range. I did attack him beforehand, it's just they didn't want to finish him off, so that was just terrible. This new cannon here started clearing out those buildings, that was kind of nice. And there we go, so that's another reason to have an extra Gatling tank here, and that Gatling tank will be promoted quickly. And these guys are not going to be happy anytime soon. So I only have one nuclear silo ready in time, but it doesn't really matter all that much, because as long as we have nuclear artillery, we can actually rely on that to finish off his particle weapon, which co which coincidentally, well, obviously not coincidentally, happen to be so close together they can destroy them in one blast. Just one more power plant to be sure. And that building's healthy. That that building is so useful. That makes this mission so much easier. Boom, there we go. And this, yeah, his artillery is not going to get far. And by which I mean his infantry, especially because they all tend to laser aim, which is quite useful once they're in your base and just mop up your buildings. But if they're attacking your base defenses, it means they have to wait a couple seconds, which is enough to kill them, so they do no damage. Then again, you have to send a lot of rocket guys against a Gatling emplacement if you want them to do any permanent damage. And these planes here, they don't, I don't think they do com contribute to your promotion, but not that quickly. The ones from the Air Force General or from the Superman General, yeah, from Superman General, they do not for some reason, at least. You, sh you can shoot, you have to shoot on a lot of her planes to get a promotion. Uh, they just don't seem to contribute properly for some reason. The getting emplacement then, the southeastern corner, that's an anti-Burton defense, because Burton likes to sneak in uh, via that route, and you can also take over the, the garage. The garage uh, will be tagged by Burton, but he can be shot to bits while he's doing that, so that's quite a, that's quite a, a nice distraction for him. Because I think Burton's AI just tells him to attack the first non-base defense building he can find, and that will be that one. I would build another one there again as an anti-Burton defense, and another one of these here just, just in case. I don't really need it all that desperately, but you never know, and I don't really want to run low on power, and there we go. Terry strike first because it takes a little longer, so you can do that while we're waiting for the nuke. Because it takes a while. I'm not quite sure that the nuclear artillery does more damage. It does leave radiation behind, obviously. But I'm not quite sure whether it's initially actually more damaging. But it could be because it seems to be able to take away almost 80% of the health of a particle weapon. There we go. Our nuke now is continuous damage and I think I just launched, launched those guys into space. And I go with more of these, these strike type weapons, which is quite useful. I really like the new radiation. It looks it looks vicious. It looks less like yellow anthrax. Well, not that the anthrax in this game actually looks like anthrax anyway. And yeah, hacking lands. Hacking lands are very convenient. It's essentially the one thing that prevents you from having to... Ooh, damn, look at that. 
These guys are actually quite dangerous. They're way more dangerous than the tanks because they can be quite quite damaging. So yeah, attack these missile defenders first because they can pack quite a punch if they come in groups and if you allow them to to stay there for a while because it once once more your guys will not attack those guys automatically. So hacking vans will be filled up. Yeah, the, the hack vans are very useful, very convenient. I think they're also stealthed, or at least you can stealth them, so that's nice too. And his base defense is here. Too much the whole switching thing doesn't really seem to work all that well. I know he doesn't always do this for airstrikes, but look at this, his laser defense should attack my planes, but they just don't do it. Well, not mm, then again, not that I complain. Yeah, and at this stage we've already won the battle, so he have we've got so much money. And he had decided to just purchase <laughs> every single upgrade. Isotope's ability is good, even though you can of course deliberately not purchase it to contaminate your, your enemy's area. And all the other things, why not? I mean I've got so much income now that it doesn't really matter. And you don't need to you don't need a large army to destroy them. In fact you can probably solo this with a with your own burden if you really if you really want to. I don't think I ever repaired that Gatling emplacement, or at least not deliberately. And yeah, that's pretty much it. The rest is is mop up job about halfway through this mission here. Let's general is a lot harder now because he has those those laser artillery tanks, and he, he just attacks he just attacks with a lot more stuff. But nevertheless, uh, he's he, he went from very easy to still relatively easy, so it's not too big a challenge. He's not he's not the special weapon general. Lang is a pain in this mod, and it's it's not fun to fight her. This guy is at least fun to fight. I do I do no longer. Occupy that house in the north, which I used to do during the vanilla campaign, primarily because artillery training is always nice. Primarily because the, of the microwave tanks, and they seem to attack that house earlier than the other one because the, the house in the northeastern base is protected by those mountains because uh, the units always have to drive around them to so take them longer to actually get there. And there we go, that was Burton trying to sneak in. Yeah, don't let him sneak in, he can cause a lot of damage. Neutron shell upgrade is complete. Neutron shells are pretty good for clearing out those houses. I do this with one shock. I leave the house intact if you want to have them. So I guess that's I guess that's good. I built a second gun here just in case, and because I had had the money anyway, so why not? Lasers general. I really like the laser like the general. It's just that his map isn't super challenging. Even if he does use his lasers, which he does do in <laughs> there's a nuclear backpack for nuclear black lotus. Even then, uh, he's he's just uh, he just doesn't send enough stuff to you. I mean, compare him to the tank general or the toxin. General. The toxin general sends a steady stream. The tank general sends infantry, air units, plus overall tanks and stuff. He's a lot more of a challenge. And the, the garage is now ours. Not that we really need it, but just just saying. He had decided to destroy the command center. Accidentally, almost destroyed the weapons factory because they look mightily similar. Yeah, there we go. And I also feel tempted to destroy all that infantry. And the reason why this guy here is even easier, there we go, that missile flies that ni uh, nice arc there, is because you can easily destroy a second dozer. Or I think you might only have one dozer really. Just destroy the command center, wait for the dozer to roll in, then destroy the dozer, and then that's it. Then he's essentially out of commission. You can just bomb him from a distance if you want to. I move in with units later, but it's not even necessary. And it's not like that it's super cheesy to to do it that way, so it's not that cheap to do and it doesn't take forever. No, you can do this still in like 20-25 minutes. There we go. This is another reason why neutron shells are quite nice. You can defend your own base a little bit easier without blowing up your own buildings. And there we go. So I think that was actually his only dozer, so whatever I destroy now is dead and will stay dead. Just brought those two in just because I can and having two of those planes decreases the chance that they will get shot down even though again he doesn't seem to utilize his laser defense properly anyway so it's not that important and I'm not quite sure what I, th what I was thinking here I was building some nuclear overlords nuclear overlords are maybe like the mostly like the regular overlords and there we go all of that is gone now but they do have those tactical nukes quite useful I don't think they have I think the Gatlings are still a little bit more useful overall, but they're, they're still good units, especially against the AI. Against human players, I'm not too sure about that because they're kind of slow. 
they're relatively high up in the in the tech tree so yeah just because something works against the eye doesn't mean it works against humans and if you play gla they might not even allow you to get all the way to there avoid the nuclear mix i'm not quite sure how good they are in this mod here but the ones from the original they, they are terrible they're way worse than Maybe they're better against vehicles, but then again, the napalm knocks up, they're fine against vehicles. And against buildings with the attack canoes, they're just terrible. They do no damage. Uh, I remember firing the n f fighting, not firing, the nuclear general with... Oh, I actually lost my dozer here, but it doesn't really matter. I don't know how I lost that. I probably accidentally drove around the building or so. Yeah, I did... Yeah, send another dozer over here, but that one actually gets killed, but who cares. Yeah, this is just me purchasing upgrades that I I can purchase because I can. You don't really need them all that desperately, to be honest. And yeah, someone recently mentioned that the propaganda upgrade doesn't, or it was the, the Gatling or the propaganda upgrade, that one of them doesn't actually work for the Overlord, which was disappointing, but well, whatever. And that's it for the most part. The reason why I like to defend in vanilla using the building in the north not the one not the dark building in the south is because you can force your dozer to stay behind that building and not just drive around and drive front of the building get himself killed like an idiot like it happens so often so that's nice nice to box in your your dozer like that and that was the little nuclear storm which is kind of like the napalm storm but radioactive obviously and these guys here they're still holding out quite nicely and yeah, that's that's essentially it. There's nothing he can do about uh, me destroying space. Now, I didn't destroy that building straight away. I should have done that. Because it bites me back later, but who cares really. I have so many resources, I could just build st guys and click on his bank base, not bank, and eventually I would win. And this artillery, these guys are strong. They're very powerful. I have a bunch of them, but the one thing I kind of underestimate regarding these guys is their rate of fire, which is very high. Um, that essentially also figures into your damage output because the new cannon, the new cannon is very powerful but it also fires very slowly so you need to wait a lot longer if you want to have the same amount of damage as opposed to a unit that's simply faster. And there we go, yeah, those, I should have should have destroyed that, that petrol station earlier but I didn't. And I almost forgot to bring, to bring those guys along because they obviously enter air because I'm used to my overlords being enter air as well. And there we go. So the rest is just a mop up job. Uh, essentially because he doesn't really have much to throw against you. Even if you don't destroy anything but his super weapons, he only has a handful of tanks. So I mean he has still has his income and his arms factory and yet he almost has nothing he can throw against me. But the downside with attack and nukes is that they there's still a lot of radiation. It's not that big of an issue, f especially for vehicles, but it's still um, it, it can be a little bit bothersome. Laser choppers are pretty good, but they're still fragile, and against half a dozen Gatling tanks, they're not going to last long. And that's what I mean. So he, he should switch on those guys, but he never seems to do it. Admittedly, I don't think I have ever used the tactic, like the proper tactic, I'm gonna call it that, of actually you know, those choppers don't last long. But those guard towers, I hate those. Those are just so strong, there's so many guys in there. I don't think I've ever used the proper tactic of attacking him from two angles at once and get trying to get through, but... Yeah, I have a feeling, even if I do that deliberately by just trying to walk through his defenses, he never really seems to switch on his defenses anyway, so... Not quite sure what the rationale there is, or what, what kind of specific script triggers that. And now his base is almost dead anyway. Yeah, I think we can wrap this up in, in a couple of minutes. So he still has a couple of tanks, uh, not that big of an issue. Especially because the laser tanks, they're still quite fragile. I mean, they're, they're heavily armored, but it's not an overlord. And these, these Gatling, uh, these Gatling, even these Gatlings here could probably take them up because they're promoted and everything. So you don't even need to rely on your, oh damn, didn't want to do that. Yeah, that's why I hate these towers. Good range, quite steady. And they're not civilian buildings. They're militarized now, so don't call them civilian buildings. And yes, you can see the laser tank does decent damage against the Gatling tank, but these guys could essentially destroy that guy by themselves if they wanted to. The Humvees got that, that upgrade where they can attack ground units, but it's not a very strong attack. It's just nice to have it at all because before that it was always a little bit annoying that 
that guy could laser ground fuse and um, target them but not actually attack them. And they actually shoot down both those tactical missiles or rocks or whatever you want to call them. So probably missiles because they are they're homing. I think missiles are this like self piloted, but I don't know. I should probably look that up, but then again. Oh nice mode seven effect there with this with the with the, with the nuclear mushroom. Yeah, yeah, this is over now. And there we go, and I even managed to drop the payload here, at least I think I did. There we go, boom. And... That's it. You defeated me, General, but I will scan your tactics and devise a superior strategy. Do that. See you next time.